Introduction to Mathematical Modeling with Mathematical Modeling Minds. This is the outline of this video. I will start with the definition of some important terms with the definition of the model. Then we will see the types of models and we will focus on mathematical models. There are several stages in a modeling process and I am going to brief you the processes with a simple example. So what is a model? In order to define the model, I will define the system and the experiments. A system is an object or collection of objects whose properties we want to study and an experiment is the process of extracting information from a system by exercising its inputs. Therefore, we can define a model of a system as anything an experiment can be applied to in order to answer questions about that system. This implies that a model can be used to answer questions about a system without doing experiments on the real system. Instead, we can perform experiments on the model. So, we can consider the model as a simplified system that has the properties of the real system. So, what we call a simulation is an experiment performed on the model. There are different types of models available for analyzing purposes such as physical models, analog models, schematic models, drawings or maps and mathematical models. Physical models are physical objects that mimic some properties of the real system. For example, laboratory models, pilot plants and full-scale models. Analog models model the target system by another more understandable or analyzable system. For example, representing the building heat dynamics using a resistance capacitor network models. Schematic models represent the element of a system using graphic symbols rather than realistic pictures. Process drawings and maps give a picture of which process units a system is composed of and where each physical equipment is located. Finally, mathematical models consist of equations such as ordinary and partial differential equations, integral equations and algebraic equations which describe the behavior of a system. For most of the time, this is an idealized system. So after this point, I will restrict the video to the mathematical models. So now onwards, when I say a model, it is a mathematical model. We can specify mathematical models in different ways. Based on the modeling principle, which we create the relation between inputs and outputs, we can divide models into either physical, data-driven or grey box models. Physical models are developed based on physical laws. Data-driven models are based on the observations and grey box models are a combination of those. And based on the time dependency of models, they can be divided as dynamic or static models. And there are deterministic and stochastic models based on the model uncertainty associated with noise. Models can be divided into two based on the availability of input variables. Models with input variables are driven or non-autonomous, while models without input variables are autonomous. Other than this representation, there are different methods we can represent mathematical models. So the mathematical models I discussed afterwards can be any type. But I will focus more on two dynamic models because the models in the real world are usually dynamic. I have divided the stages of modeling into six steps. Define the problem, make assumptions, define the variables, model development, analyze the results and model usage. 
So we will go through each and every step of them with an example system of interest. Okay, the first stage is to define the problem. Let's consider the modeling of a residential building for its inside temperature predictions during winter. First, we need to do a research about this system. What are the factors that affect the inside temperature of this building? We have to consider the heat losses from walls, roof, windows, doors to the outside. Heat losses from ground floor to the earth. Ventilation heat losses. Thermal mass of the building and furniture. Heat generation from heaters, electrical equipments and people. Internal air exchange and solar irradiation. It is necessary to dig into the details of each process and understand how they affect the inside temperature of the building. Next, we can make assumptions to simplify the system. When ventilated spaces are modeled, it is necessary to consider the density of air inside the system. If the moist air is considered as an ideal gas, it is easy to model the air density of the system. And also, when calculating the heat capacities of the air, ideal gas assumption helps. And if the air is perfectly mixed inside this control volume, we can assume that the properties such as temperature and density are not dependent on the location of the building. They are only time dependent. The total energy of the control volume consists of kinetic, potential and internal energies. Airflow velocity inside the single zone building unit is trivial. Hence, kinetic energy can be neglected. The potential energy of the system is also of minor importance. So, it is possible to model only the internal energy term. We can assume that wall, roof, floor temperatures are uniform for easy modeling. Next, we will see different types of variables encountered in this modeling process. Independent variables are the inputs to the system. For example, air flow rate and heat flow into the building. Dependent variables represent the output or outcome resulting from altering these inputs. We usually study the variation of dependent variables and here it is the inside temperature of the building. In order to define a model, it is necessary to define the parameters or constants of this system. In this example, there are many parameters including wall thicknesses, heat transfer coefficients and so on. The mathematical model development process could be done in different ways. We are very familiar with the manual mathematical model development using mathematics and physical laws. Automatic model development is a computer-aided modeling methodology and it is with minimized intervention of the human factor. Maybe we should refer to this as semi-automatic process because at some point humans are involved in model development. We are not going to further discuss about automatic model development but about manual modeling processes. So after the development of the model what we need to do is to analyze the results. We need to check whether the model gives reasonable predictions. Also, it is possible to check the model sensitivity to different parameters. Mathematical models can be used to compute the relation between inputs and outputs. In the design phase of a system, it is common to define the output specifications where a model can be used. Also, these models can be used to monitor a system in the sense of determining the order and to detect the faults. Analysis of a system or a process can also be done using mathematical models. Mathematical models are used in predicting and forecasting to examine the output variables if input variables are changed. For example, when the outside temperature is changed, 
how the inside temperature of a building is affected. Finally, the models can be used to design the control systems in order to automatically adjust the input variables to achieve specified goals of output variables. Here is the summary of this video presentation. We first looked into the question, what is a model? Then we talked about types of models and among them, we restricted our talk to mathematical models and we talked about the stages of mathematical modeling with a simple example. And these are some references I used in preparing this presentation. I hope you understood this introductory video session about mathematical models. If you have any questions or concerns over the content of this video, please leave a comment. If you really like the video, give thumbs up and subscribe for the channel and press the bell icon for new video notifications. Thank you for listening.